Okay, so good morning to all representatives of our public bodies. Good morning to all here in the conference room, staff of the OPR. I am Beverly Khan, the chairman and uh, regulator here at the OPR. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the session this morning. Um, and just really at the beginning, say thank you very much uh for um agreeing to participate in this exercise i do indeed apologize for our late start um but you know as as the opr moves ahead now with the um the building of a an efficient and effective public procurement regime in the country we understand um the value of engaging with the stakeholders um, particularly our public bodies uh, we understand and we acknowledge that there you have been in encountering challenges in in you know efficiently engaging in the process and we will fix that as we go along uh, we will depend on your um feedback uh we have been in the last three weeks that i've been here and even before that the staff has been really looking at the system and identifying the pain points and um very soon that you will uh, be exposed to some of the changes the modifications that will be introduced that will allow us to achieve the efficiency uh, that we are intending to have in this new public procurement regime. So this morning um, we are looking at the issue of handbooks and special guidelines. Um, some of our public bodies have indeed um, completed theirs and and we really seek your indulgence there for those that have completed. I see the Ministry of Public Utilities uh, is online and I know that you have completed, uh, but I ask that you, as, as we seek to fine tune uh, this process and make it more efficient, that you bear with us because we have been, uh, of course, uh, looking at the the submissions that have been made to us and we are just seeking to have uh, a better way of, of, of presenting the information um, so that it can better guide you and guide us here at the OPR as we fulfill the requirement for approving uh, these handbooks and special guidelines in particular. So for the purpose of this morning is really to introduce you. Um, we have chosen um, a, se a select group of our public bodies to be here this morning, so it is not all. Um, and uh, the, the purpose really is to take you through uh, what it is we are um, recommending going forward. I would urge all public bodies as you engage with us, if you have any suggestions, recommendations, feedback, we want to make this um, a, a, a true partnership as we build a system. I would urge you to please share them with us. Uh, we will always be open to engaging with you all. You are the ones out there in 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 the in the um public sector that are managing this process on a daily basis. I acknowledge again that I know you have had challenges and we will help you work them through, right? Um, you will see, as I said, some changes coming on that will also support our um, suppliers and contractors going forward. At the end of the day, um, when you perform well, the OPR is better able to do its regulatory function, right? Um, in so doing, you know, effecting that function. 
our, our intent is to really build a robust system. This is not going to be unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, the, the oppressive control that comes with being a regulator as well. Um, we understand that we are building for the future. And that this is about Trinidad and Tobago's development. And that's our primary uh, focus so that, you know, um, I would urge you all to, you know, um, there are going to be some changes to the legislation this week. You all would have heard in the news, um, um, you know, embrace them, right? We will amend the, the regulations as is required. Um, and also provide you with the guidance on how you would be operating post these um, changes, whether they are passed um, as they are uh, proposed or not. OK, so with that, I want to pass you on to Miss Pastora Brown who is the head of procurement policy development, the lady who has been here for quite a long while and understands, this is my assessment, understands procurement very well and um, who I continue to engage with as I come up to speed with what has transpired here at the OPR over the years. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Good morning, everyone. Um, so I apologize. What I should have done at the beginning was say, everyone, this is Ms. Beverly Khan, our new and very welcome chairman and procurement regulator. I'm Pastora Brown, head procurement policy development at the OPR. And the other person we'll be presenting today is head of retention and disposal of public property, Mrs. Joy Joseph Lara, sitting across there. And we also have um, other colleagues around the room. And if you've participated in any of our training workshops, you, once you hear them speak, you will recognize the voices. Yes. Um, all right. So <clears throat> I wanted to add my thanks. I know that the notice was very short. But we do have proclamation and we are just racing now to make sure that, um, you know, we have all the T's crossed and the I's dotted. So please bear with us because 10 to 1, we will come in quick order for other things um, from the various public bodies. So to jump right into it, um, I, I also want to acknowledge um, all sitting around the table representatives of the various public bodies and those who are attending this session this morning um, online. So again, thank you very much for your um, attendance. So by way of background, um, you would be aware that the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Property Act 2015 as amended provides for public bodies to prepare handbooks and special guidelines for approval by the OPR. In this regard, the OPR would have previously communicated in another dispensation um, three options um, that public bodies um, could have considered. The first one was to adopt the handbooks and general guidelines issued by the OPR. The other option would have been to based on your unique set of circumstances, amend the general guidelines issued by the OPR. And the third one would have been to develop your own handbooks and special guidelines. I needed to cover this ground um, as a lead up to where we are going to now. So the responses that we would have received um, from the various public bodies indicated in some instances, either one, or two or all three options, yeah? However, based on the submissions that we received from the public bodies who said they would either amend or develop, we recognize that the guidance that we thought we had provided, we probably did not, we had not communicated as well as we thought that we would have. And so we recognize that we needed to find 
probably a better and more efficient way forward. So in that regard, we would have gone back to the Act again to look at exactly what did the Act say concerning the preparation of, pub, of handbooks and special guidelines by public bodies. And so we want to present you today with uh, a, a another recommended approach. OK, so let's look then at um, the legal structure of this whole engagement. So we have section 6.1 of the Act saying any procurement of goods, works or services or retention or disposal of public property that is not done in accordance with this Act and any procurement contract or agreement that is not entered into in accordance with this Act shall be void and illegal. Yeah, so how do we avoid um, our contracts becoming void and illegal? So we have some key pieces of documentation or literature that is going to guide us in that regard. First and foremost, we know we have the Act. Supporting the Act, we have the, re re the regulations. Then we have within the handbooks and general guidelines issued by the OPR, a lot of guidance in terms of how can we operationalize the procurement, retention and disposal of public property function effectively. And last but certainly not least, we have as part of the package, the handbooks and special guidelines developed by the public bodies and approved by the OPR. So we looked at the act in terms of what is the authority of the OPR here? So in accordance with section 13.1c, the OPR is responsible for issuing general guidelines, as well as, of course, reviewing, as you will see, we have been doing. So the general guidelines are not, ne are not necessarily cast in stone. Um, you would be aware that guidelines tend to be updated from time to time as the external environment changes or as new information would come to light. So we issue and we review. Um, general guidelines, and that also includes model guidelines for the public bodies to develop their special guidelines. The OPR is responsible for preparing, updating, and issuing model handbooks, specialized bidding documents, procedural forms, and relevant documents for use in procurement, retention, and disposal of public property. The OPR is also responsible for creating and publishing standard form contracts, as well as for approving for each procuring entity its handbook and special guidelines. So then what is the responsibility of the public body very quickly uh, to comply with in accordance with sections 30 and 54 to comply first and foremost with the general guidelines issued by the OPR as well as of course the special guidelines approved by the OPR. Public bodies are responsible as well for looking at your set of circumstances as you utilize the general guidelines. You would then identify exceptions or amendments that you wish to recommend to the general guidelines. And I just want to underline here that the exceptions and the amendments are not to the act or to the regulations, which of course we understand is the law. So we can't, the OPR cannot say, well, hello, the law says A, but you can go ahead and do X, Y, Z. Yeah, so we can't do that. The exception and amendment would be to the general guidelines issued by the OPR. The, the OPR is also, sorry, you as a public body would also then be responsible for preparing your special guidelines for approval by the OPR. But the special guidelines, and we would have sent a cover letter trying to set out the way forward, which you would have seen, the special guidelines, therefore, will comprise of, among other things, the exceptions or amendments that you wish to propose. So, as we would have indicated in the letter, um, what we want to avoid, which is one of the weaknesses of how of, of the initial approach, we want to avoid the public bodies simply regurgitating what is in the act, the regulations and the handbooks and guidelines. 
in your special guideline and calling it a special guideline. We only want to treat with who are you, what, is, what are your unique set of circumstances, and then we want to look at what are you proposing in terms of exceptions or amendments to the general guidelines. Yeah, and that is what will constitute the uh, your special guidelines, your handbook with your special guidelines. So we have a proposed way forward. And that is, of course, the OPR develops a standardized template. The, the basis of the template is the comprehensive handbook. Why? Because the comprehensive handbook was developed like an executive summary to all of the other handbooks and guidelines issued by the OPR. Within the comprehensive handbook, we set out the background, et cetera, related to public procurement, retention, and disposal of public property. And we provide guidance in there in summary format that is very easy for the public body to follow. But if we give you, let's say, procurement methods in one paragraph, we then say for additional information, you can go to the general guideline, um, procurement methods and procedures, where you can get pages and pages and pages of information to help you with your procurement, yes? So on that basis, we utilize the comprehensive handbook, which is an executive summary to develop a standardized template for the public bodies to prepare their um, handbook and general guide and special guidelines, yes? So we've done that, we shared what we have. So in accordance with 30 and 54, one of the act, the, you now are required to do a couple of things as well. One is confirm your compliance with the general guidelines because 31 and 51, 54 one said exactly that. The public body shall comply with. So we are asking that you confirm and we've made provision for that in the template. You confirm your compliance with. So we are off to a good start there. Having confirmed, you will now, of course, prepare your handbook and special guidelines comprising only of the background information on your entity, as well as references to your exceptions, exemptions, and amendments. To the general guidelines. So it's a two step process and very easy and very clear. Yes, we will comply. Where it is operationally impossible for us to comply and achieve the objects of the Act, we will recommend these exemptions and these ex amendments. And this is what, once approved, constitutes your special guidelines. So it's it's clear it's clear to me, and I hope I hope that it is clear to you as well. So um, <laughs> yes. So um, yeah. Next slide, please. Right. So just as a reminder, you you all would be familiar with the um, House of Procurement that we would have developed, and you know that this. Uh, diagram is actually a portal that takes you to all the general guidelines issued by the OPR and, and continue to be issued because as you have a need and we recognize it, we will issue more. We will update, yes. Um, it takes you to those, yes. So in, in preparing your special, you refer to those documents. Now, Ms. Khan would have alluded to the fact that we, this rollout is limited to a few public bodies. So basically, you are not all, but you are some of the public bodies who would who we know would have already gone through the general guidelines and developed in one form or the other your special guidelines. So we it it it, it isn't as though we are throwing you into the deep to now go and do reviews. We know that you've already done the work. All that we are asking now is uh, that we probably have a slight modification in terms of the approach that will make it easier for you to document your amendments and um, exceptions. I always get two words mixed up, right? And it will also make it easier for us to review um, and work with you 
to finalize and approve your handbook and special guidelines. Yeah, so next next slide. So as I would have already hinted, um, the OPR has been in the process of updating the general guidelines that currently exist on the website. Um, we've done a good thing though, we hope, in that uh, just under the front cover, we would have put, if you got a chance, I'm not sure if you got a chance to see it as yet, we, we would have put a revision page. So we are not asking you to wade through the entire document to figure out where we would have made any little tweaks. We tried to update basically because since the regulations were approved last year, we had not yet updated the general guidelines. So that it, it was an ongoing process, of course, that was accelerated um, with, the, with, you know, with proclamation. So we would have updated based on the regulations. We would have updated based on feedback that public bodies would have given us from time to time where we may have had any inconsistencies or so. We, could, we took those into consideration. And of course, having reread, we also may have had one or two things that we could, oh, we could strengthen here. What we've done is we've put this revision page. So it tells you, this is what we did on page five. This is what we did on page 12. So you can check it out, yes? Right. Also within each of these general guidelines in this, the first section, we have put in these two um, very relevant sections. One is compliance with these general guidelines. So basically all what I've said this morning, and then we put 1.4 exemptions and amendments to these general guidelines. So you will see those. So now we come to the important part, preparation of handbooks and special guidelines. So basically we are looking at three bits of information within the template. We want to get the public body's information on who is the public body and we will go through the template and look at what we are talking about in a little bit. The reason for this is who you are speaks to the type of exemptions and exemptions that you and amendments that you will require. And so first, who are you? Then we can treat with your exemptions and amendments as it relates to public procurement, and then we will treat with your exemptions and amendments as it relates to retention and disposal of public property. So now what we want to do is just take a very quick run through of the template itself. No what's right. And so we have the template. So we are going to go through this template and as Ms. Khan would have already said, what we are looking for um, in addition to you actually utilizing the template would be your feedback in terms of um, did we miss anything or, or what have you, yes? So that um, the, the process that we want to use and, and I can very quickly go through the process. One, um, you uh, prepare your handbook and special guidelines utilizing the template, comes back to us. We do our internal review. Um, if it comes back to us with any comments and suggestions, we could consider the comments and suggestions to see if we can actually incorporate into the process. Um, when we provide, we will provide feedback with you, but, but it wouldn't be necessarily hands off type of feedback. It will be collaborative because that's how we prefer to work, um, where we will discuss your concerns and your considerations and we will come to a consensus in terms of any tweaks to the template, as well as, of course, related specifically to your um, content. And then you will revise accordingly and send back for the OPR to approve, to review and approve. So basically that's the process. So this is meant to be the cover. Um, if we just move down to the page just after the cover. This is general instructions for editing the template. So everything is nicely color coded. So we have yellow boxes contain instructions to be followed as they provide guidance on completing your handbook and special guidelines. So you will see yellow boxes throughout the document. 
your handbook and special guideline is to be read in conjunction with the relevant general guidelines. Accordingly, the text of the general guidelines are not to be regurgitated in your handbook and special guidelines. Because the two things, books will be going together, two sets of documents will be going together. The public body should indicate only any exemptions or amendments to the general guidelines in each relevant section as indicated in the yellow boxes within this template. Green text is to be replaced simply by the name of the public body. Yeah? Yellow highlighted text is to be edited by the public body with its specific information. The text presented in black, but in some cases you will also see blue, in this document is not to be edited. The public body can insert relevant text below the existing text within each section as may be applicable to indicate its exemptions or amendments to the general guidelines. Definitions are not to be altered. Reason being, um, you would also be familiar that the, the OPR would have published um, glossary of terms and acronyms. So those are standard. However, um, if you have a concern with anything you see, you can point it out and we again, we, we can discuss um, when we meet to discuss. But in addition to that, we are also cognizant of the fact that based on your industry, you may very well have um, industry specific or relevant glossary of terms. So those you will want to include in, in your document because that, that is important to you and to anyone reading your document. We are asking you to utilize the tra track changes feature in Microsoft Word to edit templates. And once you've completed the exercise and you have a good draft, you delete the yellow boxes um, prior to submission to the OPR. So those are the rules of engagement there. So we can scroll down to the, so just first to get a feel of what is in the document. So let's go. Oh, maybe, maybe I should scroll for the section. Scroll. Right, so we want to look, for example, we try to repeat, so you might see certain things repeated and that's just to help you as you go along. Do not revise the text in black, place the text in green only with the relevant information. However, meaning the text contained in this section, the public body can include a brief summary of its exemptions or amendments to the general guidelines issued by the OPR. So basically what you see here is what is contained in the comprehensive handbook. So we ask you to leave that as it is, but just um, customize as may be appropriate. Reason being, this is a new public procurement regime. We all have a learning curve. So we want the information to be there before us as we continue to learn and grow. So below here, you can go ahead and put, because if this is um an executive summary, you may want to summarize below here, as is indicated, um, a brief summary of your exemptions and amendments, if you choose. But you do not um, edit the text. One of the, one of the issues we had that basically created a crisis for us is because we had shared with some public bodies um, our um, word versions, um, there was a lot of rephrasing, et cetera, et cetera, which didn't add any value at all, but really created, you know, a, a bit of a of an issue when it came to the actual review. We just want to know about your public procurement. It's not a matter of, well, maybe I should have put uh, there instead of the, uh, that doesn't help, yeah? Right, so you see where, um, the spaces are indicated for your input. So all of this remains standard. All of this is standard. Because all of this came straight from the comprehensive handbook. So we keep going and we are in section three. So here is where you start really, where is it? All right, so we are in section three. So we have here, right, operational framework. So public body falls into one of these categories. You can delete what is not applicable, keep what is. 
Then you have the following subsections are to be edited or customized by the public body to provide a comprehensive yet concise. So re please remember the words comprehensive yet concise. Please, because you would like us to be able to review and, re and approve your handbook and special guidelines in a timely manner. Comprehensive yet concise description of the entity and its internal control system for operationalization of its public procurement and disposal of public property functions as guided by the instructions in the yellow text box within each subsection. The public body's text is to be inserted below. So you want to put anything, put it below the yellow text box. Yeah, just below it there. So you get to talk about who you are that will inform how you will operate. Origin establishment of the public body. So we have a little guidance here. You put who you are below. Description of the public body, functional organizational structure. Yes, we did leave in the generic structure, but based on your size and how you are established, you will want to put in your structure or your, your public procurement organigram, and then you will want to delete this one if yours is different, yes? There's here, sample diagram to be replaced with the public body structure. Do you have a unique business model? If you don't, you may want to say not applicable because, you know, it's very, your procurement is simple and easy. No, no, um, no dramas at all. If you do have a unique business model, then you will want to describe it here. We speak here about treaties, receipt of international funding, etc., etc. So whatever it is you think would make you special, you can put that there. Unique market circumstances, you can put that there. Estimated annual procurement spend, you go ahead and you put that there. Roles and responsibility, and you can even put your portfolio matrix in brief here if you wish, yes? Because it's telling about who you are and the impact of public procurement on your operations. Roles and responsibilities, right. So these are the generic ones we have. You can put what yours are, but these are left here as a guide. You can leave it in or you can um, you can put what your scenario really is. Then we come to the in framework for internal control for procurement. So based on your size, you may have a certain internal controls in place. You will want to explain that in this section here below the yellow. All right, so all of this remains the same. If you have any additional um, or alternative um, scenarios, that would go here. And basically, that's it going right through the document. Um, I hope I, I have explained it sufficiently for you to understand the approach. And then, of course, you will go in and treat with every different section as may be necessary. So in the interest of time, I will want to stop now and I will want to turn you over to head uh, property disposal, Mrs. Joseph Lara, and I'm racing down to her section of the document. Okay, so did you have any question on this part of the presentation as Joy um, come? Any questions so far? A few questions, but I could wait till the end of the presentation. All right. Okay. So we will have Joy. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Like procurement, the requirements are the same under the Act, though classified under uh, another section. Um, public bodies are required to comply with the general guidelines for retention of public property and disposal of personal property. So because we have one general guideline and a handbook, the handbook contains a pullout of the exact codes from the Act and the regulations that informs the area, and the general guidelines maps the process and provide guidance for executing the same. So we ask you to review these two documents, the handbook, and the general guidelines for retention and disposal and notify the OPR of your compliance with same. 
but also there is the option as well to submit any exemptions and or amendments, just the same for procurement, to the requirements as outlined in the general guideline. And to do this, we have provided a template as seen on the screen, Appendix A. So let's go through this template. You'd start off by inserting your organization's name, and in the first column, after reviewing the general guideline, maybe there is a section you identified after your review of the general guideline that may require a recommended amendment and or exemption you would reference there. And just for noting, we do not require you to rewrite the general guideline, but simply submit your recommended amendments and or exemption as necessary or as required. And this decision is based on being proposed, sorry, based on the requirements of the Act, but also based on past review of special guidelines, maybe of some of you all attending the session here today, as submitted by public bodies in the past, where basically special guidelines for retention and disposal, it consisted of regurgitation of the OPR's general guidelines. So we are asking you to comply with the guidelines and submit your recommended exemptions and or amendments. So going back to the template, you would reference a section from the general guidelines in column one, and columns two and three document the recommended amendment and or exemption. Then in column four, document the justification or reasoning or any supporting excerpts or information to support your recommendation and state to the bottom of the template who is making the recommendation and who approved it. So from the OPR side, we would review your proposal. We may come back to you for further clarification or discussion be before approving or not. And just for noting this information or any actions on this template is verified by the procurement regulator and the response on same is communicated to you, to each public body accordingly. So once your recommendation is approved, we have another template, Appendix B, where you would insert the exemptions and or amendments that was agreed and approved by the OPR. So basically copying the information from Appendix B that has been approved and resubmit this template to the OPR for final review and sign off by the procurement regulator. So once you receive this signed document as seen on the screen, you can now attach same to either or both the comprehensive guideline and the general guideline for future and easy reference and for application to the retention and disposal process. And that's it in a nutshell in terms of the requirements for submitting your special guidelines for the OPR's approval for the area of retention and disposal. Thank you. I now hand you back over to Ms. Brown. Okay, thanks very much, Joy. So I think that's about it in terms of the presentation. So we would like to open the floor, the mic. <laughs> For you, um, the question, the questions you may have. Thank you. 